I remembered an old claim that President Obama's official White House portrait has a giant sperm hidden on his forehead. Now, of course, that sounds nuts, but is it true? That would be an elephant in the room. AI assured me it was completely false, a conspiracy theory, but also suggested that I seek out credible sources for verification. I decided to do just that. First stop, Snopes. Now, I have some serious reservations about Snopes. When it comes to anything political, they definitely let their ideology get in the way. But it was the only debunking of this that I could find, and they didn't beat around the bush. The subheadline made it clear. Far-right pundits went off the deep end. They then showed us a tweet of the painting, but cut it off before the money shot, so to speak, and said that the controversy was perhaps inevitable given that it was painted by Kahindi Wiley, a gay African-American artist who's also a self-professed provocateur. Evidently, Sean Hannity and Alex Jones had made the claim, and even Hannity quickly backed down. Snopes said the two men were correct in that some of the artist's previous work featured direct and indirect representation of spermatozoa meant to mock highly charged masculinity. Adding, they leapt a bit too eagerly to the conclusion that a faithfully reproduced vein popping out of Obama's forehead is in fact a giant sperm cell. Clearly, it is nothing of the kind. But then, Snope shows us an image not of the painting, but a regular picture of President Obama. So that's a bit weird. Snopes finishes up by letting us know that the whole notion originated with racist trolls inhabiting the 4chan message board. But weirdly, Snopes never shows us the entire painting or a close-up. Their writer has 25 years experience fact-checking rumors, but somehow didn't get around to providing us with the actual image people were talking about. Now, I want real evidence, not something that could have been photoshopped. So I went to the National Portrait Gallery. Unfortunately, this image is only 800 by 1200, so it doesn't really help us. I then turned to the nation's journalists, completely avoiding conservative outlets since, well, you just never know. Here are most of the top articles that came up on Google. And the weird thing was, every one of these did exactly what Snopes did. They trashed Hannity or Alex Jones. They threw around words like crazy, beyond ridiculous and racist a lot, but not one of these included an image of the portrait itself so their readers could see how crazy that claim actually was. I found a few other mainstream sites that had the image embedded only from a tweet and I couldn't trust that. But eventually I found a great one at the Smithsonian attached to an article they'd written in 2018 about the portraits unveiling. It's a 2000 by 3000 pixel image taken with a very high-end camera. But before you and I look at it closely, we need a bit more context. Remember that Snopes line about the spermotozoa? So artist Kahindi Wiley really likes to make a splash. He's well known for recreating famous old master paintings, replacing the featured person with a black man, such as this version of Napoleon leading the army over the Alps, or St. Andrews getting particularly close to his cross. Both Wiley and his art live up to his provocateur label. And he's really into sperm. This sort of thing ain't my bag, baby. It is his bag. He repeatedly works sperm into paintings to, quote, take masculinity and all of its bravado down to the most essential component. Sometimes it's obvious, like this guy with it all over the place. Other times it's in the background, like from our guy on the horse. Or close up in the crucifixion of St. Andrew. One time he put it on the picture frame itself, and here's one just of sperm. And sometimes they're hidden. I'll give you a few seconds to find this one yourself. Look in his pants. There's the little sucker. And when Wiley isn't painting sperm, he routinely talks about it to the media. This glowing New Yorker profile of him mentions sperm three times, including, quote, in every male ejaculate, there's a possibility to populate an entire city like New York. Every single person that's around is winning some cosmic game. I could read more quotes from him, but you get the idea. Now there's one last piece of evidence that we should look at before making a decision. President Obama's forehead. He does have a prominent vein that's sometimes more or less noticeable. The one Snopes used isn't all that helpful, but I found a good picture where it really stands out. You can see it coming down prominently, squiggle a bit at the bottom, then go into his hairline. It looks more like a worm than anything else. Okay, we have enough background now. Here's the super high-res image that I got from the museum. It certainly looks different from the president's vein. Is this just hair discoloration or is that the sperm's head? And does the top look like a disappearing vein or is that a tail? If you want to see the full image on your computer, I have it linked to my Substack along with all of the painting images and news stories I mentioned here. What's the verdict? At this point, you know as much about the painting and the background as I do, so my opinion's no more expert than yours. But if I had to choose between a crazy conspiracy theory or this guy just innocently painting a vein that looks like it did, I'm going with the conspiracy theory. 
I think Kahindi Wiley was wily enough to know exactly what he was doing. He added something that sparked controversy, but not so blatant that it couldn't easily be denied. Or in this case, to be called a racist conspiracy theory, something the media certainly likes to do. So, what do you think? I'm Ken LaCourt, and I hope I gave this to you straight. Remember to think for yourself and subscribe if you'd like to see my future videos. Thanks for joining.